Ah, yes. Fear. Fear is something that everyone feels at least once in their life. Ranging from the dark, bugs, and rapid spin. What? Rapid spin is scary. Have you ever asked how it is that they spin so rapidly and why they get even faster while they do it? That's some scary stuff. But fear not, as we have Pokemon that protect us from rapid spin, thanks to their complete and utter immunity to it. Although their main issue now is that they aren't Goldengo, and thus, sadly, people are going to look past them. Did you know that the only rapid spin blockers currently ranked in Gen 9 OU are Goldango and Dragapult? And in national decks, Dragapult is banned and Sinistia is currently there instead? So we're gonna shed some light on the rapid spin blockers without the ranking of Goldango and the popularity of Gengar. Let's get started. Also, Mist Magius, worst team for red and blue, description and eye card. Thank you. Being Runarigus is a rather sad existence, because it's hard to keep up with Kafagrigus when Kafagrigus has things like Toxic and Pain Split, which the Galarian version here could not remotely hope to possess. The only things it really has over Kafagrigus on the surface are access to Stealth Rock and being a Volt Switch immunity. These are both really valuable traits. However, having three additional weaknesses is not a valuable trait in return for these. So this begs the question, really, what does Runarigus do? Well, good thing you asked. Stealth Rock lead with access to Trick Room, Will-O-Wisp, Body Press, and Poltergeist off of a base 145 defense and a base 95 attack to work with makes it a very solid support Pokemon that isn't completely passive. Toxic Spikes is also rather useful and potentially so is Trick. However, those are also a bit more fringe. With that said, I do not like how we're supposed to evolve it in Sword and Shield, and I would prefer just leveling this up normally. What even is with this weird ass evolution condition anyways? Now look, I know Bayonet has gotten a Mega and all, and realistically speaking, it could theoretically not be considered underrated, but at the same time, its competition was infinitely less underrated, because said competition were mons everyone has acknowledged to have worth. Bayonet, however, has only ever been used on, like, random battles, and in nat decks where it uses Destiny Bond, and now recently Poltergeist. This is a rather sad existence for Bayonet that I don't approve of, and therefore, I'm gonna recommend a set idea before moving on, and we can see how well it goes later. Rest, sleep talk, Poltergeist and Gunk Shot. Me putting Miss Magius here is not a plug. However, anyways, real talk, Fluttermane existing was good for Miss Drevis, but sadly, it was not good for Miss Magius. Miss Magius will now likely fade into obscurity as it is completely power crept by Fluttermane and, well, Gengar. However, Miss Magius does get some tools of its own that allow it to at the very least do something, even if it is no Fluttermane. So why not just play Gengar? Well, simply put, Miss Magius actually has Levitate still, and doesn't die on Psychic or Ground-type attacks. This little bit of extra defensive utility it has over Gengar, despite worse stats, means that it can't get slowed down by the currently common sticky webs. There is a line of play here. Access to Memento does make it a solid Suicide Mon to get in a real sweeper. But I'm gonna act like that's not real and move on with my life. I know I've talked about the funny Sandcastle Man before, so I know I can make this quick. Terra Water Water Compaction is absolutely hysterical to use, especially when you're running Body Press. Shore Up is really good, even more so if you're up against Sand. It has the Renarigus typing, but the difference is that it has that reliable recovery we mentioned earlier. Speaking of not passive, a base 100 special attack stat and super neat moves like Earth Power, Giga Drain, Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, and of course Stealth Rock are all good. And uh, it's niche and fringe, but it's got its uses as a physical wall.
Being forced to talk about this has to be revenge for when I said it's worse than Iron Moth. <sighs> Anyways, Hisui and Typhlosion has an innately interesting set of qualities that allow it to play rather well, especially in the sun of course where its primary home is. While 95 speed isn't the best, with a choice scarf you can outrun solidly fast threats, and a base 119 special attack gives it one powerful eruption, especially when exacerbated by the sun. Assume the Kin Gambit isn't black glasses. Terra Fire Typhlosion can survive a Sucker Punch from Kin Gambit and threaten to take it out with Fire Blast, even if it Terra's out of steel. Its ability to switch in on Zamazenta and Rapid Spin on Sun Teams gives them an extra layer of defensive utility that allows Hazards to stay up and allows Typhlosion entry points to spam its eruptions. Alright, I talked about it. Now hopefully this saga can be over and the rider quit sabotaging me because I dunked on one of his pet choices. And no, I am not about to act like Frisk is better than it is. Alright guys, it's time we get to a real Chad's choice. A Pokemon that is used by only the most handsome and chattiest of Chads. One that only the connoisseurs of Chadliness can possibly comprehend putting on their team. Right this very minute, we're going to talk about the greatest ghost and ground type ever to exist. Golurk is an absolute fiend of a Pokemon, and is also one of my personal favorites ever made. I love the part where it has sufficient bulk, and unfortunately low speed, but a solid enough 124 attack stat built for getting the job done. With access to Iron Fist, you get some neat tools, sure, but that's a bit too basic. We of a more acquired taste have come up with a game plan that is what we like to call very entertaining. Weakness policy rock polish with poltergeist, earthquake, and dynamic punch slamming into any and everything that moves. Plus, no guard is your ability, because who needs dodging? Your only true switch in is Hisui and Zoroark with an air balloon. And if you're gonna let that stop you, then you simply aren't trying hard enough. Go use Golurk immediately. In the lower tiers though, as it sadly isn't the best. But we appreciate it anyways. Trevenant got the short end of the stick. It got one singular form, unlike Gorgeist who got four and got told to work with it despite its shortcomings and its below average stats. And you know what? It kinda has, if you're willing to pretend that PU is making it. Now, I know that tiering doesn't automatically reflect viability, as given two entries ago when I was gassing up the old fencing fire ferret. But Trevenant is, uh, it's where it is for a reason. Yeah, it's got Harvest, it's got Will-O-Wisp, it's got Natural Cure, and then it's also got the defensively bad grass typing slapped onto it, because of course it does in order to pull all that down the drain. But I will be a firm believer that there is hope in this regard, because there is a way to make this bad boy work. We got Hornleech, Knockoff, Will-O-Wisp, Trick Room, Harvest, and a Citrus Berry. Hell, we even got Toxic in Gen 9 and Poltergeist for Stab. There are options. We just gotta put something together with all these moves, and then maybe we might at the very least create a lower tier hero. The reason I consider Corsola's Evolved Form to be such an underrated classic is because it has a really great design, really. It's a spirit surrounded by ectoplasm that gives off otherworldly energy. That's pretty sick. The issue with it though is that they decided to give it two useless abilities, a base 30 speed, and a base 50 defense. They created the world's greatest knockoff target. Now, I want to justify a competitive use for it, I really do, but I'm not gonna waste your time. The lore is the coolest thing about it, and sadly no one really talks about it, so I'm bringing it to light. If you want to use a set, well, Perish Body as your ability, take that base 145 special attack and 30 speed, hop your way onto a Trick Room team, and play Aggression. I like to consider myself a connoisseur of the Pringles mascot, as you all know. 
as I know I have definitely brought this Pokemon up before in recent memory, even if I can't remember when. But damn, this thing did not deserve to fall off. I still think this bad boy still has the defensive prowess to be one of the tanks in human history. Access to Strength Sap and Will-O-Wisp gives it the power to fend off physical attackers, Scald is incredibly spammable, and your fourth move can just be whatever you feel like. And if you invest in those special defenses and add Water Absorb, you got quite the special wall on your hands, specialized in taking hits from Walking Wake and Ursaluna Blood Moon, all while threatening them with stuff like Toxic and Scald. It's got some competition, sure, but I think it's very overshadowed, and I see a lot of value out of our favorite brand of chips. What about other special threats? Uh, trust, belief, the power of friendship, and a base 100 HP and 105 special defense. I know I've also talked about this mon before, but I found a strange new love for it. I know I've talked about it as like an acrobatic sweeper, I believe with unburdened, flying gem, and acrobatics on the physical side, but I've decided that I was not entirely correct. We can also use Calm Mind, Strength Sap for recovery, two special attacking options, and then come out with quite the potent special sweeper too. With two Calm Minds, stored power becomes base 100. And with Unburden Up, you can get those base 100 stored power offs pretty quickly. And then you can pretty much shred through walls like there's no tomorrow. There's more I can go into, but I've said it before. But with that said, don't be afraid to tech Charge Beam if you don't mind losing and really like flexing. And that's it. I think every single one of these ghosts deserves more time in the limelight. In a world where it feels like the only ghosts are stuff like Dragapult and Goldango, we gotta shine some light on the poor fellas who were gone, but not forgotten in the afterlife. Now, speaking of the afterlife, I'm gonna go watch Coco. And thank goodness I made a ghost video without mentioning it.